So good morning, guys. Welcome to our writing task to agree disagree. So I'm going to discuss all the things that you need to know about this type of test. So the format of our essay writing today, task two, is do you agree or disagree? If I'm going to give an opinion about this, this is perhaps um, one of the most common questions that come out on the test. So it is equal. It, it is uh, equally important that you pay attention to all five of them. So we will be rounding all the five formats um, during our entire discussions soon. So, but for now, we shall focus on the do you agree or disagree part of the test. So our objectives is we want to be familiar with the details of the IELTS writing task or subtest, of course. We want to understand this, uh, the implication of this exam and how can I improve my performance so that when I get on the actual test and this is the topic that I'm going to cover, then I would definitely have a great set of skills so that I can answer objectively my um, question. So we will also want to know the different types of instructions and how to organize a response. So by means of comparison, I call the agree disagree the default instruction. So when you say default, this is the topic, this is the task description where I use to compare the different other instructions. So we have the discuss both views. We're going to cover that soon. We have the open-ended again uh, on our next session. We have your to what extent do you agree, disagree? So basically, since you know that do you agree, disagree, and to what extent do you agree, disagree sounds so much alike, then it is important to first know what agree, disagree objective is so that we can understand how to approach that to what extent do you agree or disagree better. And lastly, the, the newest member of the family, your do you think the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? So based on what type of instruction, there will be different ways how you can answer the essay. So that once we know what uh, do you agree or disagree is, we can identify it and then we can learn what are the ways I can approach this properly, okay? And lastly, we want to know how to approach each part of the essay. So when you say each part of the essay, uh, GT, ACAD, you already know that on your task one, your essay, has parts, okay, your, even your task one has parts. So task two also contain similar parts, but we will be uh, giving an idea as to what the parts are and what do they represent. And as a candidate, how I can make sure that the parts of my essay work in congruence with the entire, um, essay itself. So that is our goal. That is what I want we guy uh, what we want to understand. So we want to make ourselves familiar with writing task two. We want to know the basic do you agree or disagree instruction so that we can we can approach it properly. And uh, when it comes to approach, we also want to know what are the parts so that those parts would properly work. Okay. So those are our objectives. So I'm not going to um, lengthen my discussion here. I want to cut to the chase. I want you guys to know that I will not sugarcoat anything. I will not say that if you review at 9.09 or a Kabuneto and branch, you will pass the exam with a nine in writing. Guys, nobody got a nine for the past three years in the Philippines since 2000 and 2019, no one got a nine, 20, 2021, until today, no one got a nine. So the highest possible score you might get in writing is eight. Again, we're not disclosing the chance that even one of you among you guys here um, in my uh, session, you might get a nine. I'm not disclosing that fact. But nine is a pretty difficult thing to achieve. And that is because writing is the most difficult task in the whole IELTS subtest. I just want to give my two cents of the matter, why this is difficult. Well, if you guys are familiar with your task one, you know that you will be writing something, okay? In the writing subtest, you have to produce an output. You have to create a strategic um, discussion. So if it's GT, you're going to write a letter. If it's academic, you're going to write a statistical report. But Writing task two is a different game. 
writing task two and task one, they are very different from one another, all right? They are polar opposites. So when it comes to task two, you are given an opinion, okay? And in this opinion, you will be responding in an essay format. So this opinion might also contain argument or this argument can also contain problem. And what are the narratives that you might expect for your task? Well, there will be um, a requirement for you as a candidate to discuss an issue. So there will be questions or opinions of general interest. And uh, in this matter, you have to give your own point of view. Now, you need to also consider an opinion in relation to evidence or weigh up the pros and cons of an argument before you present your own view of the matter or perhaps discuss various aspects of a problem and then outline your ideas for solving it. So all of which are fairly similar tasks. So you need to be knowledgeable, not just in one area of your uh, written report, but in all the areas out there. So when it comes to this, all right, when it comes to um, discuss an issue, opinion of general interest, and you have to give your own point of view. This is primarily what our focus is on. So you, you need to understand that there will be situations in, have, in which you have to choose between two ideas and how are you going to give defense to those ideas? How are you going to argue? How are you going to provide your opinion? How are you going to provide reasons? Um, what are the ways in which you can give examples and the likes? So to put this idea simply, to put this matter in front of us. So an essay writing task two requires you to write an essay and the essay is about problem that is faced by the society today. So if you are knowledgeable, if you are aware of the certain issues about the country or most probably worldwide, because you know in IELTS, you always have to go massive. So if you guys are listening, especially for replay watchers later, I want to highlight this, okay? That in IELTS, you don't just talk about Philippines. You don't just talk about your community. This is not about your neighborhood or your family. This is not a topic about you as a candidate. This is a topic about what your opinion is. What is your perception with the issue? And how can you use the English language to write an essay to discuss this issue, to provide an opinion to this issue? So it is equally important that you are not just knowledgeable in writing an essay, but also being uh, knowledgeable of what is happening around you. So when you say what is happening around you, topics about health, because you know health concerns, vaccines, um, young and old, those are some of the common issues, struggles, hurdles that we are facing. Okay, about COVID, um, about wearing masks, or what about distance learning, exactly what we're doing now, what are the advantages, so you have to give defense to that. So if you are already knowledgeable about those basic things, then congrats, all right, hats off to you, you have my respect, but if you don't know, we still have an opportunity to learn. And that opportunity to learn, that opportunity to learn is something that we can acquire through reading. And I don't want you guys to read just about anything, okay? I don't want you staying on Facebook all night long, browsing about um, different fake news pages. I want you to read newspapers. Sir, I don't have any ways to read actual newspapers because, you know, they're pricey. It's 25 pesos at Kinabukasan, iba na yung balita. I don't want to spend something. I don't want to spend on something that I can only use for a day. I want to spend on something that I can use long term. So if you guys have your smartphones, if you guys have your laptop and internet connection, I want you to check those newspaper websites. You can check inquirer.net, Philippine Star, 
can check uh, Manila Bulletin, check um, Huffington Post. We want to check international newspapers as much as possible. So the more global the newspaper is, the more massive it is. And I want you to check out English newspapers. Hindi kayo magbabasa ng bulgar, ng tiktik, okay? I don't read them. Read English newspapers because reading newspapers not only help you in acquiring significant pieces of information before you take the test because you are putting some, you're storing information here so that you can use later. We are also um, becoming much more aware and knowledgeable about English because technically those newspapers are written in English. So I want to highlight that, okay, the importance of this scenario. So uh, that's the overview of what your task is. So basically, this is what we should expect. And uh, we don't want to be caught off guard. We don't want to get surprised or anything. So the topics, even though they don't require you to have a specialist knowledge, you have to be able to present ideas on general issues. As I've mentioned, as I've highlighted on my previous slide, there will be issues that you have to um, discuss topics about. All right. There will be a prompt. The prompt contains the background statement that introduces the topic, what is the theme that they need to write, is it about health, is it about education, is it about family structure in the Philippines, what about um, environment, are we talking about the environmental concerns, what about gadgets, what about technology, what about the societal structure, what about money even, so those are the background statements, those are the common topics, those are the common situations that we have to write an essay about. So primarily, if you're aware of those topics, then you're halfway through passing this exam already. But again, uh, it doesn't mean that you don't know about those topics, that you can't do anything about it. Again, we have an opportunity to learn because your exam is not today. Thankfully, your exam is not yet today, so we can do things about it. Now, the instruction. Take a look at this. The last bullet point right here. Okay, the instruction. Okay, then tells us exactly how we should approach the topic. And it is very important that you carefully analyze exactly what you are expected to write about. So when it comes to uh, the writing subtest, each of the different instructions, I've named five, all right? Each of the five different instructions, they have different approach as to what essay, what the appearance of the essay will look like. So for example, if it is, do you agree, disagree, you are bound to have at least five paragraphs. When I say at least, if there's a presence of um, provide ideas based on your personal examples and experience, then it could be six. I'm saying it could, I'm not saying it should, all right? So you have five paragraphs for agree, disagree. It is expected that your discuss both we should have four, or six, but not five. So you get the idea. Depending on what type of instruction, the number of paragraphs will vary. So that is why it is important that you understand that our topic today covers your agree-disagree and how you can write an essay with complete parts so that it, it would function in the real-life situation. Now, the, the thing is, I don't want any one of you asking me, sir, how many paragraphs for uh, open-ended? Why? I don't want you asking that question because we have strategically um, came up with topics, with uh, reports. We have come up with classes and lectures for that. So those, how many number of paragraphs were discussed both views and why is it four to six and not five as compared to agree, disagree? Those questions will be answered once you attend my discuss both views uh, lecture. But I want you guys to understand that I have a file, a PDF to be exact, which I'm going to upload later on the group that you will be using as comparison of your um, how many paragraphs for agree, disagree, why, and how many paragraphs for discuss both views in advance so that you can have a clear picture of what to expect on this lecture and uh, on our next session. So I want you to have it later. I'm going to post it later together with the um, upload of this, the re-upload, the replay on YouTube. So that's it. That is the overview. That is what you should expect for our uh, lecture, okay, for Agree Disagree. Now, for you to complete the task, you have to write more than 250 words, okay? 
you have to write at least 250 words. I'm going to put a yellow marking here because of the importance of this. And again, you are recommended to spend 40 minutes on this task. You are recommended to spend 40 minutes on this task and make sure that we follow the instruction because uh, depending on the instruction, we will be having a different output. Now, this task carries more weight than the writing task one. 67% is given for writing task two. Uh, just to give you a clear overview of what this writing task to um, assessment is, uh, your writing task one score, let's say you got a five. Unfortunately, you were not able to finish your task one. It doesn't matter if you're ACAD or GD. Let's just assume that your uh, score for task one is a five. Now, it just happened that you put more effort in doing task two and you made a score of eight for task two. So let's put that into um, perspective. So you have writing task two, eight, which will then be multiplied by two, which then becomes 16. 16 plus five, that is 21. So that we will be dividing by three. So 21 divided by three, you will still get seven. So you look at that, even though you got a failing score of five in task one, because task two uh, scores much more, a total of 67%, two thirds of your writing task it means that you will still get a great disadvantage, uh, sorry, a great advantage. Now, what I want you to do is that I want you to do your writing task two first on the actual exam. Sir, is that correct? I am going to start doing task two on the actual exam. Yes, you heard that right. You will be spending the first 40 minutes of your time dealing with task two because task two is more important, task two carries more weight, task two is more difficult. So we have to spend more energy, more effort in doing task two than in doing task one. So that's it. But again, we want your task one score to also work in congruence with your task two score. So I am inviting and encouraging each and every one of you to also pay attention to your writing task one and to make sure that your writing task one works in congruence with your writing task too. So that is how it works. We get your two tasks. Sir, on the actual test, what happened? So you will get those two tasks, your task two, your task one. You do task two first 40 minutes, you finish task two under 40 minutes, you check your work, and then you do task one, you spend the last remaining 20 minutes to finish your task one. That is how we do your um, writing tasks. So. When you practice, especially tomorrow, your mock examinations will happen. I want you guys to do a listening test and then you do a reading test and then you practice doing a writing task. So you will be having some choices as to what writing tasks are you going to pick. Um, later, I'm going to flash some examples here. You also have a lot of example questions on our orange book. When you enrolled, we gave you an orange book and that orange book contained every question in the exam. And those questions are constantly being recycled. So getting um, an idea of what could probably occur on the test will give us an advantage since we can prepare beforehand. So that is the entire overview of your writing task two. That is my instruction. That is my suggestion how you can deal with task two better, okay? Do you guys have any questions before I continue with my next slide? All right, no one's raising their hands, no one's unmuting themselves, so I'm going to take that as a no. Now let's continue, okay? So after this, okay, so in agree-disagree type of essay writing, what you need to do will be revolving around two things. The first is you have to not only give an opinion, but you also have to justify the opinion. So when you say, why do I prefer eating vegetables rather than eating fast food? So your explanation is probably because vegetables are healthier, while junk food or fast food has a lot of um, bad cholesterol that are not good for the body. So I gave my opinion, which is I like 
vegetables better than fast food? And I explain to you with my reason, why do I think vegetables are better than fast food? And then you will be evaluating the advantages and disadvantages. So you give the opinion, you will justify opinion. How are you going to justify your opinion? Two things. You either evaluate the advantage of the side that you picked, or you will be giving advantages on the side that you refute. So it's either two things. I like this, I don't like this. I like this, I don't like this. So since I like this, I will give positive feedback on this. Since I don't like this, I will provide negative insights on this. I will provide negative arguments on this. So that is how you navigate through the agree, disagree type of essay. So how will the examiner assess your performance? Well, it is similar to your writing task one. I bet uh, each and every one of you right here and uh, my replay watchers later, you guys have already attended uh, major lectures for task one. So your assessment for task one and two are quite similar. So when it comes to task one, okay, we call it task accomplishment. But let me rephrase this task accomplishment in front of you. We call it not task accomplishment in the actual exam, but task response, which is signified by the mnemonics TR. So TR stands for task response. It is basically asking you a question whether or not, as a candidate, you have accomplished the task by responding to the question. So there is a question. The question is, do you agree or disagree? Now, the question that they have once they check it is, did Kevin answer the question I have for him? Did the candidate answer the question? Not only that, did the candidate discuss all parts of the question? You see it right here? Did the candidate um, discuss all parts of the question? So we don't want to miss some bits and important pieces of the information that we have in the task description. We have to discuss all, okay? Later, you will see how I am going to paraphrase those terms. How can I make sure that even though I'm still at the very beginning of my task, I am including all parts of the question, okay? So we need to provide relevant ideas and opinions. So when you say relevant, uh, relevant ideas and opinions, you have to make sure that your arguments are providing insights of latest events occurring. So when you say latest events, latest things, we do not argue about um, the past. Okay, well, you can use the past as an example to commemorate why the present is better than the past. But we're not going to use outdated arguments. When you say outdated, masyadong luma na, masyadong matagal na. So we have to make sure that your ability to respond to questions will be relevant to today's standards, okay? So that's the importance of reading newspapers so that you get to be updated with the latest and current events that are happening, all right? And then your last argument here is that you have to be able to develop a well-supported argument and we have to make our position clear. So you chose uh, your side. You picked a stand, you stood your ground. You have to make sure that it will stick until the end. So I pick vegetables. My essay is about um, me defending the vegetables over fast food until the end. That is the idea of your past accomplishment. And again, let me go back to the uh, question right here. If you're not going to be able to write 250 words, then you failed to accomplish the task. So it is important that you provide more than 250 words. Again, it is difficult to write about something if you do not know about that something. If you do not know about the topic, if you do not know about the idea, if you don't have the idea about the issue, it is difficult to provide a 250 word essay about it. Now, that is your uh, task. Now, if I was not able to come up with a 250 word essay, you will get 
a TA score of 5. And nobody is here because he or she wants to get a 5 in TA. We want to get as much as possible a band 7 or higher. And you cannot do that. If you will not respond to that instruction, you have to write more than 250. So what I'm looking for is around 270 to 320 words. So I don't want you exceeding the 320 word mark though, because if you do that, you will be uh, utilizing your valuable time, which is something that you should be spending on your task one. Because you remember, we still have another task, your task one that you need to accomplish for an hour. So you have to divide your time accordingly. That is how we do our task accomplishment, okay? Now, let us proceed with this. This is a sample question that you might see, okay? This is an example question that you might see on the test. So let me highlight this, okay? So this part, this is what I call, all right, the task prompt. Oh, sorry, the background statement, right? Some people say that modern technology has made life too complicated and the solution is for everyone to live a simpler life and avoid using the technology. Now take a look. This is our instruction. Do you agree or disagree? Again, this is the instruction. Do you agree or disagree? So we will be using the opinion type of response, but now, I want to put a highlight on this scenario. We see another instruction right after the do you agree or disagree? And it says, give examples from your own knowledge and experience. Now, does this instruction give me a go signal to present my um, personal experience or narrative? Sir, it is very clearly put. Give examples from your own knowledge and experience. Definitely, I have to tell a story, right? No. Remember this. IELTS writing is formal writing. Essay writing is formal writing, especially your writing past two. So if you're going to talk about your personal examples or personal viewpoint, then you fail. Yes, sir, I'm... Uh, I'm confused. It says in the instruction, it clearly states, give examples from your own knowledge and experience. So you don't say something like, my English teacher or my neighbor or my dog or my uncle. You just don't do that. Why? Because that is a sample of a narrative. When you say narrative, sariling kwento mo base sa iyong sariling karanasan. Eh sir, ulitin ko lang. Hindi nga po ba tungkol doon ang ating topic? Actually, this is a bait. This is a bait that examiners used so that more people will fail the test and we don't want to fall into this trap. Okay? I repeat, this is a bait that examiners used so that more people will fail this exam and we don't want to be part of that trap anymore. So what you should be doing here is that although, listen to me, although you will be giving your example, your personal experience, your personal example will be your observation as to how other people react to the situation. So example, I'm not going to say my cell phone or I'm not going to say my mother. I'm going to say something like this. Um, as I have seen many people who use their cell phones, again, that is similar to my own personal experience. Later, we will be exploring this part because again, uh, it is really crucial because if we have something like this, then you have to add another effort. You have to do more. You have to um, make sure that your writing tasks comply. So. Let me put this simply. We do not see a do you uh, or give example. Okay, let me erase this. All right, let me erase this. We do not see, okay, the give examples from your own knowledge and experience. We just don't see it, all right? 
it ended with do you agree disagree all right so look at that you have five paragraphs your introduction reason one reason two reason three conclusion okay listen to me that is your introduction you have your reason one reason two reason three conclusion i repeat you have your introduction you have your reason one reason two reason three you have your conclusion that is the content of your essay divided into five paragraphs now sir um if i don't see that do you give or uh press give your personal example or experience then my essay is five i repeat introduction reason one reason two reason three conclusion okay now it is now five paragraphs but what if we see it what if it exists what if it's there oh, it so happened that it's there your number of paragraphs will now become six okay you will be devoting listen to me you will be devoting an extra paragraph, an extra paragraph that gives an example from your own knowledge and experience in which I am saving for later. Okay, I'm going to do a comparison of side-by-side -side construction. So this is the sample paragraph. We call it example paragraph. Okay, this is the example paragraph. This is the wrong type of example paragraph. And this is the proper way to do this. Okay, so that is why I want you guys to have a clear picture of what your task is. So that is the green one right here. That is what we call the background statement. Okay, if it is separated into two sentences, then the first one is the background statement, the other one is your task prompt. And then the do you agree or disagree is the instruction. Now, May epal. Okay, ito nga. So give your examples from your own knowledge and experience. Your essay now becomes six paragraphs. Yes, sir, wala siya. Your essay is only five paragraphs. Are we clear? Are we clear, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I hope everything is clear, ha? So that when I ask you to make an essay that has something similar to this, then um, you're going to follow the, the exact same thing that I said, okay? So I'm not going to highlight this any further. Baka ma-oversaturate naman kayo ng info or ma-oversaturate kayo ng kakulitan ko. But, you know, the reason I am repeating some ideas often is because I want it to be retained to you because it is so important. If you miss something like this, as important as this, and everything fails, okay? And we don't, any, we don't want to do anything with failure. Now, the second marking is what we call the communicative quality of your essay. So we have to present your ideas clearly and coherently, and we have to organize your writing logically. As I've mentioned, paragraphing plays a very important role in your essay writing. Again, paragraphing plays a very important role in your essay writing. And I've mentioned how many paragraphs in a typical do you agree, disagree essay, and that is five. Now, if it, is, uh, if it is a question, if it is a task description that contains the give your own personal example, then it now becomes six. So you are going to divide your essay into five parts, but we have to make sure that the parts are still connected together. Okay, so coherence is the logical arrangement. Cohesion is the connection. So if we want to connect one paragraph to the other, what are we going to do? We have to use connectors. It's so easy. It's so simple. Gusto mong i-connect, gumamit ka ng connectors. Okay, so what do we call those connectors? We call them the discourse markers. Okay, we call them the uh, cohesive devices. All right, so we, we call them differently. But it is easy to think about. We call them connector, okay? For you to understand it, for you to remember it easily, we call them discourse markers. We call them connectors. So those connectors, um, we have two types. We have the coordinating conjunction, the fanboys, for and nor, but, or, yet, so. Again, fanboys, okay? I will be putting it on our chat right now. Fanboys. Okay, fanboys, it stands for for and nor, 
but or yet so. Okay, I'm going to write something here. Okay, the coordinating conjunction. We have the fan boys. Okay, so we have the for and nor. And then we have the but. Okay, and then or. And then we have the yet. And then so. So that is what you call your fan boys. Now your fan boys, we cannot use them to connect um sentences so the very basic understanding of fanboys is that we cannot use them to begin our sentences sir my sentence is very long i want to add something you mean to say i cannot use end yes you cannot use end because technically it's a coordinating conjunction and you cannot use it outside the sentence you cannot use it to begin a sentence you use your for and nor but or yet so inside the sentence together with while, okay, with while, the word while, with the word uh, followed by, we cannot start your sentences with them, okay, we, we cannot start with sentences with followed by, and lastly, we cannot start our sentences with, um, okay, so while followed by and especially. Okay, we do not start our sentences with specially. So those are the words that we use inside the sentence. So why am I seeing some of your sentences to begin with while? So if you, if you understand the scenario, this is how you should, okay? This is how you should begin your sentence with while. While I was washing the dishes, my mom was watching television. While I was watch, uh, washing the dishes, comma, my mom was watching TV. So what should I do? Uh, it's actually great, but many of, right, many of the writers that I've encountered are simply doing while I was washing the dishes. And then they put a period, which makes the sentence fragmented. So if, uh, if a sentence begins with any of the words that I have written here, then that sentence now becomes what we call a fragment. And we don't want any problems with fragment because fragmented sentence um, creates a grammatical inaccuracy. So avoid starting your sentences with them. Sir, my question is, I really want to add an idea and my sentence is very long. So I put a period, I want to add end because I want to add. So what are the words that I can replace end with? So you cannot Obviously, begin with fanboys. I'm going to list them down right here. So you can use, okay, if you want to add, you can use the words additionally. All right. You can use the word uh, furthermore. We can use the words in addition. You can use the words moreover. Okay. But never, ever forget that each of those words require a comma. Take a look at that because we are referring to them as connecting devices. We are referring to them as discourse markers. And once after you're done writing one discourse marker, you have to put a comma after it. So if I want to add, I need to use additionally, furthermore, in addition, moreover, okay? What if I want to show a contrast, okay? So for contrasting idea, for contrast, I can use the words, uh, however, it's very common. I can use the words, on the other hand. I can use the words, um, despite this. I can use the words, nevertheless. Well, I don't actually recommend nevertheless uh, as a word that you use, because if you, put, if you put it into perspective, on the other hand is four words, as compared to nevertheless, which is a very long word, Baka nakalimutan pa yung E na mali pa ng spelling o mali pa yun, di ba? So we have, however, on the other hand, despite this nevertheless, sir, we're showing contrast. Ah. Can I use the word in contrast? Actually, yes, in contrast, okay? In contrast, you can also use the words uh, on the contrary. Okay, so there are so many words that you can use. Wag lang but, please, okay? Wag na wag gagamitin yung but. So I'm actually giving examples, all right? I'm actually giving examples. What are the words that I can use? So for example, 
comma, for instance. And then we have your, um, for example, for instance, to illustrate, you have your namely, you also have used uh, respectively. Those are common. Those are the common uh, ways to enumerate ideas. So those are the ways how you can connect those ideas together. But we call them the visible discourse markers. We have the invisible discourse markers as well. So when it comes to invisible discourse markers, um, we use terms like this, okay? Um, one of the, plus your plural noun, plus singular verb. So example, I'm going to create a sentence out of this. So one of the chairs is missing. Or I can also use something like this. Um, one of the many disadvantages of eating fast food is its negative effect. towards people's health. So see, I can create a connection between the first idea I have just by using one of the many disadvantages of eating fast food is its negative effect towards people's health. That makes my essay very communicative. That makes my essay discursive. And um, we are using uh, a lot of giving importance, we connect the ideas, it makes your writing flow smoothly, if you get what I mean. So that is how you use the following connecting devices. Again, many of the test takers in the Philippines fail at the task response and coherence and cohesion aspect level. Um, why do people fail in task response? One out of five Filipinos submit their tasks under length. That is because of lack of idea, lack of preparation. You can attribute it to many different things, but that's the first two main factors. When it comes to coherence, paragraphing, the paragraphing is very poorly done. Okay, like an agree disagree essay with four paragraphs, it won't happen. It just won't do. Um, there's no connecting devices used. Um, no moreover, furthermore, in addition to that. So you have to use them. Coherence is the division and cohesion is something to do with, with the connection. So what score do you think an examiner will give you if they, they just don't see the additionally, the moreover, the furthermore, or on the other hand, what score? They, they will think, hey, I don't see any landmarks here. I don't see any of the connecting devices that we should be seeing. Why don't we give this person a coherence and cohesion score of four? And we don't want four, okay? Hear me out. We don't want four. We want a score of seven or higher. And for you to accomplish that, connecting devices are your friends. So I want to highlight that. Any questions so far? Okay. No one's asking questions. Okay. So let's take a look about coherence and cohesion. To be able to ace this criterion, you must make your ideas into transition. So we have to talk about one idea at a time. We don't want to put all the ideas in one go. That's why paragraphings exist. One paragraph, one idea. So after presentation of a single idea, let's say I use the idea, one of the many disadvantages of fast food is its negative effects to person's health. So I have to elaborate. Why do I think that... that um, Hello? Okay. Why do I think that um, eating fast food is negative or provides negative effects to one's health? So I'm going to explain. Okay. So how do I explain this? So there are many harmful chemicals, additives, and preservatives that are put in fast food. According to different studies, Fast food also contain high triglycerides and cholesterol, including high fructose content that leads to many cardiovascular diseases, the leading cause of death of people worldwide. So did I elaborate it? Was I able to give 
justification to it. Nagbigay ba ako ng example? Yes, cardiovascular diseases. Ano mga sample ng ng fast food? Let's say uh, an ice cream sundae with a caramel syrup. It's really high in um, sugar. What what else? Fried chicken contains a lot of uh, what we call this um, palm oil, which are unhealthy. Okay, so again, I am using a variety of discussions just to make sure that my idea saying fast food is unhealthy is I am giving you reasons. And the reasons that I'm trying to tell you are informative, they are descriptive, they are factual, they are not just out of the blue. Meron tayong research, it's backed up by studies. So that is how you present ideas in IELTS writing task two essay. Agree, disagree. So logical arrangement. So you move from one part to the next. And again, I cannot highlight this any further. We have to use your discourse markers. Discourse markers, as I've mentioned, will be your friend all throughout. Okay, so that is your coherence and cohesion. Okay, next. We have the... Um, okay, question. Sir, saan isisingit yung example sa paragraph? Okay. Sir Aljay Mamnina, saan isisingit yung example sa paragraph? Let me answer this question very quickly. Okay, we put the examples in the paragraph, every paragraph. So let's say you have five paragraphs. Okay, let me um, put a drawing here. Okay, I'm going to write a text. So you have a paragraph one. Okay. Okay, so you have your paragraph two, obviously. Okay. And then you have your paragraph three. And then you have your paragraph four. And then you have your paragraph five. So your paragraph two, your paragraph three, your paragraph four, we call that the body of your essay. And each of those paragraphs will have examples. Now, your question is, sir, I will be putting an example. Take a look at this. I will be using this arrow, which means that they contain an example. Okay, so does my paragraph two contain an example? Yes. Does my paragraph three contain an example? Well, yes. Does my paragraph four contain an example? Okay, now here's the question. What if my paragraph two does not have an example? My paragraphs three and four do. That's okay. What if my paragraph two contains an example, but my paragraphs three and four don't have one? It's okay. Because according to examiners, what matters is at least one paragraph must contain an example. Now, listen to me, everyone. We are talking about examples in the paragraph. We're not specifically, okay, talking about the um, hashtag example paragraph because this is this example paragraph is what i'm referring to um this example paragraph right here is what i'm referring to the personal opinion personal example so you are going to insert another paragraph right before you do your concluding concluding paragraph okay so again let me replay this to you. I did my intro. It's okay. My paragraph two, three, and four, that is what I refer to as the body of your essay. Now, your paragraph two only has one example. It's okay. Sa kanilang tatlo, sa body, okay lang na isa man lang sa kanilang tatlo ang mayroong paragraph na example. Now, sir, eh, nakalagay po, give examples based on your personal uh, reasons, give examples, give personal examples based on your experience, yun po yung nakalagay. Then that is the time na mag insert ka ng tinatawag na example paragraph bago ka mag-conclusion. So magkaiba pa yun. Okay, later, i-elaborate ko pa yun ng mas malinaw. So kung may tanong pa, Ma'am Nina, Sir LJ, pwede po ulit kayong magtanong ngayon. Kung wala naman, Ipapaliwanag ko po ulit yan mamaya pagdating natin doon. Sir, wala na po. Okay na po. No. Okay, thank you po, Ma'am Nina. Okay, mali pa ako ng spelling ng paragraph. Okay, bawal yung mali ang spelling, ha? It should be paragraph. Alright. So, 
Now let's talk about the vocabulary and grammar. So I have mentioned this in many of my discussions that the vocabulary and grammar mistakes in writing um, are the very common errors in, uh, in, in the test. <clears throat> many common errors that test takers commit. So we, know, we not only have to use a wide range of words appropriately and accurately, we also have to use a variety of sentence structure. So we don't just use simple sentence throughout. You also have to show that as a candidate, um, you are knowledgeable about the different types of sentence structure. So if you're going to attend my Grammar 7 lecture, I don't know if it's next or the other week, if it's next week or the week after that, uh, that is the time that I will give you a clear definition of what a sentence structure is and what are the ways in which you can do a variety of sentence structures. So we also have to observe proper tenses, prepositions, etc. <clears throat> now I have a question. What tense are we going to use in essay writing? What type of tense? Come on, guys. Anyone? Okay, what type of tense? Joe, do you have any answer? Uh, so, it's a good and no present tense. Present tense. That's uh, a very accurate answer. But what I'm looking for is the simple present tense. Because present tense, meron tayo. Present tense, meron tayong present progressive tense, meron tayong present uh, perfect continuous, meron tayong present perfect. So simple present all throughout. Sir, can I use the past tense only, only if you are comparing some events that have occurred in the past that you want to make comparisons about the changes let us say an appearance or the technicalities of the past. So here's the past. Like people used to make phone calls uh, in the past. So people used to pay more to make cell phone calls in the past, but now communication is essentially free. So that's comparing, comparisons of two things. So you can use um, a simple past tense of the verb if you are comparing some events in the past to make the idea of today much better. So grammar, be careful with your punctuation, spelling, prepositions, conjunctions, verb, vocabulary, uh, what do you call this? Variety of sentences, variety of sentence structures, variety of words, avoid repetition. So if I'm using the word people on the same sentence, you cannot use this, the, the word people again. So you have to come up with synonyms. Synonym of people, persons, individuals, citizens. Uh, what else? If we're referring to the all the people on the planet, call them humanity, okay? The society. So vary the words that you're using. Avoid very common vocabulary. Avoid good, bad, happy, sad, because those are very common words. But also avoid highfalutin words. I am encouraging everyone to use the words that they're comfortable with. Basta wag lang yung everyday English. Pag sabing everyday English yung mga common na naririnig mo. Big, uh, small, happy, sad, okay, good, bad. Avoid lang yan. So use a much more academic choice. So good, beneficial, uh, advantages, merits, okay. Uh, bad, oh, when you say bad effects, uh, negative effects. Um, disadvantages. So you can use other words. Later, I will show you some synonyms of those words. Basta yung word lumagpas siya ng sampung letra, hindi na ako fan. For example, I'm going to use nevertheless. I'm not going to use it because nevertheless, parang nasa, I don't know, never five, tapos the, uh, three plus four, seven. A total of 12 letters. Eh kung mag on the other hand na lang ako, it's better, di ba? So when it comes to the number of words, you will accomplish it much easier. So, and also spelling, di ba? So ililista mo yung word. Ang word na napili mo, gargantuan. Why are you going to use the word gargantuan in replacement for huge? Pwede naman palang huge as compared to big, di ba? Uh, mas ma-appreciate pa ng examiner in terms of the communicative aspect of the language. So avoid bringing yourself 
into finding mga kakaibang words, mga synonyms sa, sa Google. Huwag kayong gagamit ng mga masyadong kakaibang words. Use uh, a more academic level sounding words, but do not force yourself to use highfalutin words, especially if you can't use them properly. Okay, so that is my suggestion for vocabulary and grammar. You just have to be really careful. Okay? All right. So, let us continue. So, question analysis. So, analysis of the question, what is being asked? This is the step one in essay writing. So, first is you have to know the breakdown of your past description. Okay? When you say the breakdown of your past description, you will be dividing them into parts. So, what are the parts of a question? Okay, what are the parts of the question? Let me um, put things into perspective right here. So we have the topic statement. Okay, so now the topic statement is what we call the background sentence or the background statement. The prompt is where you have to make a stand about. And then the actual instruction is where you can determine what type of essay format are you going to use. So I want you to identify those three in any of the task description. So later, your task is uh, after the lecture, you'll be checking the questions that I have for you, both on my Facebook group, check your orange book, uh, find the questions and um, determine where the topic statement is, where is the prompt, and uh, what are the actual questions and instructions in this type of question? Uh, how can I identify whether it is agree or disagree? Okay, so identifying those three are also very important in your essay writing. So question analysis is always the first step. If you misunderstood, if you misinterpreted, or if you misconceptualize the question, then it will crumble, diba? Kung sa umpisa pa lang, mali ng pagkakaintindi sa tanong, diba? Ang tanong is, talk about the advantages of using technology to young people. Eh, ang essay mo is about using technology to people, not young people. So you failed to include an, uh, an important part of the question or the task description. That, that means you fail. So all the parts of the question, analyze the question carefully. Check it, okay? So you have to check the key carefully. It is very important. Now, this is my question to you guys, okay? All right. So this is my question to you guys. Question analysis. So without capital punishment, our lives are less secure and crimes of violence increase. That's true, all right? Uh, lately, uh, in a global scale, there are a lot of crimes happening and uh, we don't see these crimes stopping anytime soon. That has led to the birth of this concept that whether we should give capital punishment a chance in the places where the crimes are really rampant, okay? Now, we call this, okay, let me highlight this uh, colors. I'm going to use different colors. So first, I will use the color green for uh, this one. This is the task prompt, okay? I'm sorry, this is the background statement. All right, this is the background statement. This is the first sentence. Because if it is divided into two sentences before the instruction, we call this the background statement. Now I'm going to put the red color here. This is what I call the prompt. Okay. So the green one, we call this the background statement. The red one, we refer to this as your prompt. Now, what do I call this? Do you agree or disagree with this statement? What do we call this? We call this the actual task instruction. So I have divided them into three colors because obviously your prompt is not just one sentence. So if your prompt is composed of 
two sentences, then the first sentence will refer to that as the background statement. The second sentence of your prompt is now the actual prompt. And then the last sentence is your actual task instruction, which is the do you agree or disagree? Okay, now we shall understand first that um, this type of question could come out on the test. So let me share something with you, okay? Later as we present the samples, let me share something with you. Okay, so first I have divided where they should be. I have placed them in their rightful places right here. So after you analyze what are the parts, okay, what are the parts of your task description, we are now going to brainstorm. So first, we have to understand what the essay is about. So our essay requires the insight of our own genuine essay writing brilliance. So we have to ask ourselves a dozen questions and in doing so, we have to answer them. We also need to meditate with a pen in our hands, think of related concepts and pick out the best ideas, okay? So brainstorm, you think, why is this a topic? How, if I'm going to answer yes, what will happen? If I'm going to answer no, what will happen? If I'm going to agree with the statement, how should I um, defend my side? If I'm going to answer I disagree, how should I refute the topic? So. What does it mean? So most likely the task description might not make sense during the first glance. However, you need to facilitate asking two questions for yourself so that you may be able to understand the task much better. So again, you ask two questions. What is the main topic about? And the second question, who are the parties involved? Okay. Tungkol saan yung topic at kanino patungkol yung topic. Always remember, as a candidate, you are not included. Listen to me. You are not included in the topic. Your goal here is to provide an essay that reflects your own perception. You are an overseeing entity. You are a third party here. So this is the topic to whom the topic is about. Okay, to whom do we attribute the topic to? Okay, who are the people involved? What kinds of people involved? Sometimes it's not people. Sometimes it's about animals. Like, do you agree or disagree with using animals being used as test subjects for scientific experiments. So it's not about people, it's about animals. So clearly, bakit ka magwiwi? Hindi ka maaniman. Di ba? All right. So listen to me. In essay writing, be careful with the use of your pronouns. Hindi ka nagwiwi, hindi ka gumagamit ng us, hindi ka gumagamit ng our. Because as a candidate, you are not going to involve yourself you're not going to put yourself together at the same level as the people involved in the topic. So example, tungkol nga sa animals, tungkol sa animals being used as test subjects. Hindi ka gagamit ng we, kasi unang-una, hindi ka animal. Eh, sir, I'm talking about being uh, the, the ones who experiment the animals. Hindi ko po sinasali yung sarili ko sa nag experience sa kanya. Hindi ka naman talaga kasali eh. Di ba? So avoid using we, our, us. In the beginning, in the middle, but there is a part of the essay where you can use we, our, or us. And that is in the conclusion. Later, I will highlight why are now, why are we now allowed to use we, us, or our in the conclusion? And why not in the first few paragraphs? Okay, so again, kung hindi na iintindihan, if the topic does not make much sense to you at first, for you to understand it much clearly, you ask yourself, what is the topic about and who are the parties involved? Of course, you are not included in the parties involved. Okay, so general format. When I say general format, 
we do a full block. Okay, full block. When I say full block, this is what I mean by this. Full block. You see this? Okay. This is the paragraphing that we do. Okay, this is the paragraph. For example, this is the line. This is, it begins right here. So you put a period already. Now, what is this? Okay, this space right here. Okay, this space right here represents that your previous paragraph is over and you are now going to the next paragraph. So what do I mean by this is that on the actual test, we do not indent. No indentations are allowed. Okay, here is the, the red marking right here. Okay, no indentations anymore. So we have to begin at the instructed line. Now the red marking that I am putting right here symbolizes the space between the instructed line towards the paper. So wag na wag din po kayong lalagpas doon, ganun din po dito. Okay, because if we're going to do so, nakakaroon ka ng problem, may, may deductions din po yan. Okay, so leave a space after every paragraph. Okay, so leave a space after every paragraph. Do not cut words. What do we mean by do not cut words? Hindi po tayo pwedeng gumamit, okay? We're not going to use, um, we're not going to use contractions. Like don't, Okay, and do not, you're going to make it don't, you cannot, you're going to make it can't. So avoid, gonna, wanna, yeah, cause, don't, won't, can't. So avoid using them. Guys, I'm going to excuse myself for a minute. I just need to sneeze outside. So just give me two minutes to do that. So later on, your questions about the general formatting will be answered. Okay, guys, I'm back. So where were we? We're talking about full block, no indentations anymore. So every part is divided into space. That means that you're done with the previous paragraph and you're now beginning with the next paragraph. No cutting of words, no contractions, and usually we use the present tense. So questions so far, guys, with this uh, topic? Okay, none. So let's begin. So no title. All right, hindi ka maglalagay. My essay, pagkalaki-laki, walang ganun dito, okay? So no title, no rewriting of task description. Now, let me highlight this. Um, no rewriting of task description means that we're not going to repeat the words from the examiner's question. Because ideally, when it comes to the words, when it comes to vocabulary and lexical resource, um, examiners are trying to identify how many words did you repeat from the task description? And if they're going to find out that uh, they are basically copied, all the words, same structure, same everything, then they will give you lower remarks for vocabulary. So we don't want 
to commit a lot of errors at, as early as the introduction. So you don't want to rewrite the task description. Again, observe margins. Huwag kang lalagpas sa left, huwag kang lalagpas sa right. Do not split words. They are considered informal. Block format. So we cross out errors using strike through. Okay, use either cursive or print, but never all caps. Write at least 10 words per line. Sir, am I hearing this right? I can use either cursive or print, but we cannot write in all caps because we have to remember that capitalization is also an important part of your grammar. So if you're going to write your essay in all caps, then that means that everything is wrong in terms of grammar. So use the proper capitalization rule. You begin as a new sentence with essentially a capital letter. If you're going to include a proper noun, then it also must be capitalized. For When it comes to giving example, let's say you're talking about brands, you're talking about um, some, some names of events or locations, so you capitalize them. When it comes to errors, okay, you are given an eraser, yes, but if you're going to not replace something with what you erased, for example, okay, uh, let me write a text right here. Many of the, the people are now using social media. Okay, this is an example, all right? This is an example of um, a sentence. Now you put a period. However, you found something problematic. Look at this, the word the, the. Okay, now what you are going to do for many people, uh, what they do wrong, okay, is that they do something like this. Okay, so let me repeat, let me delete this. Many of the people are now using social media. So that is wrong, why? Because if you can see, there is a huge, huge gap right here. Because what you did is that you technically erased it. There's, there's a huge gap, which another word can still fit. So that's not how you erase properly. So how to erase properly? Let me teach you. So this is how you erase properly. Many of the, the, People are now using social media. Okay, so if you committed an error like this, what you will be doing instead is this. You strike through the the. One liner, that's it. No parenthesis, no um, sawtooth erasure, no squiggly lines, just one line. Not X, not cross, but this is how you cross. You strike through it, okay? So, sir, what if, this is my mistake, okay? I wrote the same sentence, okay? Many of the people are now using social media. So I didn't actually repeat any question, but the concern that I have is the word people. Because on the previous sentence, I used the word people. And on this sentence, I used the word people again. That will be counted as a repetitive use of the word people. And not to mention, if your entire essay consists of nothing but people, you, the examiner saw that in your entire essay, it contains about 12 people. So that's repetitive. That's, uh, that's overly uh, over repetition. So people, what are you going to do? That is the time that you can use your eraser. 
So this is the time that user eraser right here, okay? So you will be erasing the word people using your eraser, and then that's a time that you can use to replace it as persons. Sir, paano kung hindi po kasha? Kung gumawa ng ganon na part, okay? You can do something like this, okay? Pwede kang gumawa ng ganon. Okay, they are. Okay, tapos you put the, the answer right here, okay? This is where you put it, on top of it. So, but again, be careful not to commit a lot of errors because when you erase, when you uh, become overly conscious about what you're writing, then it creates a lot of problems when it comes to the time management. Because every second counts. I don't want every single second of your precious time will be, you know, devoted to just erasing. That's why planning is very essential. Okay, so that is the formatting questions. Christine, Mary Rose, LJ, Nina, and uh, Jo, Angeline, do you guys have any questions or concerns? None so far, sir. Okay, thank you so much. All right, so we shall continue. So, do you agree or disagree the exam is presented with a topic? As I've mentioned, this topic is what they call the background statement or a prompt. It's either both of them in one sentence or it's separated, okay? And then you're required to disagree or disagree. So that is what they call your stand. What you need to do, as I've mentioned, I will be repeating this many times over. You have to give the opinion. You have to justify the opinion. And for you to justify the opinion that you made, you have to evaluate the advantage and disadvantage of this. Now, here are the sample questions that I need you to ponder. Okay, So we have this first topic, shortage in housing causes severe social consequences. The government should act on this alone. So that is a sample question. We're talking about housing and infrastructure, which is a societal problem. Now, another topic is this. Space travel is one of the priorities of advanced countries realizing the significance of the exploration. However, third world countries prefer to address the basic needs of their people rather than engaging in space discoveries, which is the more important priority. So, sir, I thought the topic is going to be agree or disagree, but why am I seeing this? which is the most, or sorry, which is the more important priority. Now, if you are being asked to choose which is more important, which is better, then even though you do not see a do you agree or disagree question, it does not mean that it is automatically an open-ended question. It simply means, what is your opinion? Which side are you on? And when it, and when, when the, theme of the question is similar to um, what is your opinion? Which side are you on? Pick a side, pick a stand, choose between the two, which do you think is more important? Then that is an agree-disagree question and therefore requires the do you agree or disagree format. Next, coins and paper money will soon be replaced by credit and bank cards. Do you agree or disagree that eventually we will have a cashless society which will be safer and more convenient for everyone? Now, in this question, it is very crucial because many people disagree. It's actually very wrong. You do not disagree with this, okay? The answer here is given. Your answer should be agree. Okay, sir, why? Let's take a look at the prompt, okay? Take a look at the prompt. Coins and paper money will soon be replaced by credit and bank card. This is my question to you. What do we have right now? Do we have credit and bank cards? Yes. Do we have coins and paper money? Yes. Do you believe that credit and bank cards are slowly replacing coins and paper money? Yes. That's why you agree because take a look at the statement right here. Take a look at the statement. All right. Eventually, we will have a cashless society which will be safer and more convenient for everyone. Majority of the population, even though Philippines is a third world country, majority of us are paying online. We do most of our transactions online. 
We pay through GCash, we pay through BDO, BPI, Union Bank, every other means of paying online. We pay Lazada, Shopee, Zalora online. We pay Food Panda online because we know that paying coins and paper money are not only unsanitary because you know people can touch it, they might have COVID or anything, but at the same time, it is inconvenient. That's why the argument stays right here. Eventually, we will have a cashless society, which is slowly happening. Why? Because a cashless society is safer. Take a look at this. Is much safer, and a cashless society is more convenient for everyone. Now, I will be justifying my essay as to defending why I think so. What are my reasons? What are the examples that I can give so that I can um, present to you a narrative of a report that contains information that defends the cashless society, why is it safer, and why is it more convenient for everyone? So again, I'm just trying to give you comparisons of what type of questions you might encounter. So this type of question is about housing, engineering. We talk about space travel right here, pure science people. And then we're talking about the society when it comes to technology in terms of economy. So society, technology, economy, those are the three things that you need to cover in this last question. So clearly, Question one, question two, and question three are so far apart when it comes to the topic. That's why you need to read, 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 read the newspaper so that you can gain useful information prior to taking the exam. That is so important. Okay, now let's continue. Introduction. So, sir, uh, we already know the do's and don'ts about the writing. We already know what are the things we need to do. Now let's talk about the actual creation of our introduction. So in introducing your answer, okay, um, in introduction, okay, Joe, you have a question? Uh, yes, sir. About yes. the given example, the, the three examples that you gave, uh, you said that the third uh, example, uh, I let, an, I let uh, answerable by if you agree or disagree. Mm-hmm. Is it because the statement we have? Uh, is it because the statement has no options, and it because it will be replaced soon? What do you mean? Is it the third this one? That yeah, the coins in, that eventually yeah, the coins will in, have a cash society. Yeah, the well, coins see, pay Joe, for money. Actually, Joe, that's a very nice insight. I don't want you to mute yourself anymore. I want you to engage on a conversation with me about this, okay? Yes, sir. Because I have a lot of things to discuss when it comes to this question. Um, first of all, we want to talk about general, not just what you feel or what my mom feels. Because, you know, my mom still feels that um, paying money using credit cards and bank cards are, you know, are awful choices. Some people might say that. That's their opinion. But do you believe that a cashless society powered by credit cards bank cards, not only that, online payment in general. Do you believe that it's safer? Yes. Why? Because online payments, they have two uh, security measures. We open this. If you're using an iOS device, it can only be opened by your face. Okay? On a typical Android phone, it can be opened by your password. In uh, flagship Android devices, it can be opened by your password or fingerprint. Do you think that opening an account, opening applications online for your banks, do you think that is much safer compared to bringing money? Yes. Yes, so, yes, sir. Is, did I justify that a cashless society is safer? To this statement, I think yes, sir. Yes, yes, okay. Cashless society is ultimately safer. Because you see, Joe, um, the main reason why we are improving our payment schemes, let me give you a piece of history. In the past, we used barter trade system, but people soon recognized that exchanging goods, products, and services for the other, sometimes they do not get the exact value of it, and sometimes they get the value exceeded of it. So there is nothing to economize. There is nothing to incentivize the value. Let's say I own a pig and you own four chickens. 
I, I'm, I was eating uh, pork meat for five weeks now. I'm fed up. I want chicken. So let me replace your four chickens with, um, with, a, with a pig, with one whole pork. Okay, so we replace that starter, but again, it's downplayed because it has no value. Now, people discovered monetary, um, monetary values. So first of all, we use clay. Okay, we use clay. We use iron ores. In New Zealand, they saw that um, people there, they made clays with holes in the middle so that they can put them in bamboos. So that, let's say, I put five uh, clay Clay coins in a bamboo, it is, let's say, 50 pesos in today's currency. Now, the bigger the clay is, it means the bigger the currency. So, imagine mo, meron silang nahukay na kasing laki ng bahay, all right? Kasing laki ng first floor building. Ganong kalaki yung value. So, now, it's very inconvenient because people will be carrying coins, metal, and metal is very precious in the past. So, what they did is they tried to came up with um, what we call paper bills. At yung paper bills na yun, it's not actually money. It, they don't represent money. They represent bonds. They mean that this piece of paper right here states that I own 50, let's say 50 pounds in the bank. Kaya nga bank note ang tawag eh. It represents my money in the bank. Tapos, na-invento nila, 1970s, yung credit card. Because sabi nung mga tao, kasi isang friends yun eh, sa isang restaurant, sabi nila, Bakit pa kailangan na magbayad, magdala ng pera every time? It's, it's not very um, convenient. So what I want is pupunta ako dito, magre-relax, hindi ako magbibilang pa ng pera, hindi na ako magdadala pa ng maraming pera sa bulsa because it's unsafe, pwedeng manakaw. So magdala na lang tayo ng piece of paper or a card that proves na kung, kapag kumain ako dito, I'm allowed to eat hanggang ganito. May limit. So yun yung credit card. So ngayon, na-invento natin yung credit card, na-invento natin yung bank card, ATM. Bakit? Ang hassle pumunta sa banko. Pumunta ka pa sa banko, pipila ka, teller, pagdadala ka ng pera. Pera mo, isang bag na pera, takaw sa mata. Pwedeng manakaw. Ngayon, safer ba kung sa ATM? Yes. Safer ba kung sa, sa online? Yes. Kahit anong statement ng iba to mo, Joe, safer pa rin talaga ang cashless society at hindi ang paper uh, and coins. Safer. So on dami kong argument, like we can go on for this in like four hours. I can argue with you for straight four hours why cashless society is safer and more convenient. Now, we, we're done talking about safety. Okay? Pag-usapan naman natin yung convenience. If I'm going to go to SNR, okay, let's say I'm going to go shopping, SNR or uh, SM, and all of a sudden, my bill was about 20K. So nasa 20,000. And my money is only 19,000. So what I'm going to do is pabalik ako sa bahay, babayaran ko yung bill ko, tapos mapapurchase ko siya, bibilang kami ng pera, magbabayaran kami, uh, magbibilang ng coins, kulang pa ng panukuli na coins, uh, dahil wala silang 25 centavos. So you get the point. But by using cards, di ba? Ano yung lagi nating naririnig? You earned points. Okay? You will be earning points which is equivalent to money. So what does... Uh, BDO and SM do. Like every after a year, pag na-reach mo yung ganitong type of purchase, ma-level up yung card mo, yung uh, membership mo, and you'll be given a free umbrella. So it's so much better than paying cash because I got a free umbrella. Umbrella is something that I don't buy, but you know, thank you for giving me one. So um, coins and paper money were invented in the past because of people's convenience. Convenience. But people invented credit and bank cards because of people's convenience as well. And now we're trying to uh, put everything virtually. Sir, eh, what about hackers? What about uh, yung mga missing cases na nawawala yung pera? That is the point. If you were hacked, you can report to the bank right away and they will cancel your account. They will secure it. Kaya nga meron tayong mga two-factor authentication. Eh. Now, nasa jeep ka, huwag naman sana mangyari. May 25K ka, nanakaw si 25K, saglit lang yon, paglalahom parang bula. Now, Kung yung pera mo nasa wallet, nasa ATM, kailangan pa nilang isaksak yun sa machine, kailangan pa nila yung um, nagyan ng password, hindi nila alam yung password, hindi nila makukuha yung pera, nakalabas ka na ng jeep, tumawag ka sa bank, please cancel my account because I was robbed. Safe, cashless, convenient. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, if I disagree, look at this job. If I disagree, 
What is my argument? Tell me. I disagree that cashless payment is better. Or no, cash payment is better than, than um, paying using bank or credit cards. What is my argument? Nothing. Pwede akong gumawa. Like out of the blue, pwede gumawa ngayon ng... Um, may mga small merchants kayo. Kasi may mga small merchants. Halimbawa, mga tindera sa labas. Mga nagbibenta ng mga... Mga sa gilid ng highway. Mga nagbibenta ng... Um, ng mais. ba? Diba? Lala naman silang credit card and bank card. Yes! Kaya nga, we still need to have this incentive that you do not need to carry huge amount of money with you all the time. You do not have to bring all your money with you all the time. You put that in the bank and let this card pay whatever you need. Now, syempre, we need to bring bills for our daily expenses, but you don't need to bring that much. You don't have to bring 25K traveling from Gapan to Kabanatuan. You only have to bring 1,000 pesos. You, don't, you just have to bring hundreds of bills, and then you bring your card. Kung something pop up, kailangan mong bayaran ng mahal, this is your card. Kung, kung kailangan mong bumili ng mais, may pambili ka ng mais. That's the idea. Okay, sir. Sir. Uh, Joe, do you have any other concerns <laughs> besides that? Uh, none, sir. Kasi I know there Thank are you. some of you na pwede kayong magpunta sa kabilang side, but I'm trying to give you an idea that if you're going to choose the other side, pwede pa rin naman, Joe. Eh, ako, halimbawa ako, challenge ko yung sarili ko, punta ako doon sa uh, disagree that cashless society is not going to be safer, but hacking lang ang aking magiging idea at ang hirap kumaba na 250 words ang aking essay na talking about hacking, masyadong technical yung stuff. It's not reflecting the IELTS um, English use of the language anymore. So why not use agree and then explain ko siya in, in terms of ideas and then later on, paglabas ko sa ano, hypocrite ako eh. Nag-agree lang naman ako because for the sake of IELTS, pero gumagamit pa rin naman talaga ako ng pera less uh, than bank cards. This is IELTS. We have to think about what we can choose so that we can write more every single time. And look at that. Naka-pre-made na. O baga, naka-ready na eh. Na pag nag-agree ka, yun ang magiging argument mo. Safer and convenient. Para bang sabi ng, sabi ng examiner question, oh, basahin mo lang yung question. Binibigyan na nakita ng clue. Ayan na. Sige na, mag-agree ka na. Mag-disagree ka pa ba, Jo? Hindi na sir. Okay na po yun. All I'm trying to say. Alright. Okay, okay. Thank you po. Yes, Joe, if you have any questions kasi I really want to have um conversations like this because you know, alam ko eh, ganun tayo eh. Like sir, ito po yung totoo eh. Ako, if you're going to ask me, I have three credit cards, one bank card, I have um two Gcashes, I have many apps on my phone kasi ang dami kong kailangan bayaran na bills, ang dami kong kailangan tanggapin na payments. At the same time, I'm not using them daily. What I'm trying to use daily, cash. But I don't have arguments with cash in IELTS. Hmm? That's what I'm trying to say. May mga situations that you have to pick aside na hindi personal na nag-reflect ng viewpoint mo. We just mamaya pag-uusapan natin. Mas maganda ang ating argument mamaya. No? So gusto ko yung mga ganyan. Huwag kayo mahihiyang magtanong. Always ask me questions. Okay, sir. Thank you po. Okay, no worries, Joe. Uh, sir, LJ, Ma'am Nina, you were asking questions po kanina? Opo, sir. Kasi pa, paano po kung halimbawa po agree yung napili ko? Mm -hmm. uh, kailangan ko po bang, for example po, kailangan ko po bang ilagay dun sa statement ko yung mga pros and cons? Okay. Actually, that's so, a very nice question. Lang, yun yun ang pag-uusapan natin. Ma'am Nina, ngayon. Ah, okay po. Okay. So, sisimula natin siya ngayon. So, slowly, simula natin. So, how to introduce? So, in introduction, there are uh, some things that you need to understand. First, the number of sentences must be between two to five. So, can I write um, four? Yes. Can I write three? Yes. You cannot write one. You can never write six sentences. That's overkill. So, it is going to be between 30 to 50 words. So, don't exceed 50 Kasi ang mangyayari dyan, baka masyadong kumapal ang introduction mo. Tapos yung body, mas maikli pa. So when it comes to aesthetic measurements, your introduction should look shorter 
should look more generalized than the body. So that's the reason why we have come up with certain parameters like this. So introduce the theme, the topic, the general idea. So you're going to give a general statement what the topic is about, and you are going to state your side. Okay, we call this statement of your side stand. Okay, you will be hearing this stand for all my writing classes. So I want you to remember this. If this is the first time you attended my lecture for writing, then remember that term, stand. You will hear that on discussable views. You will hear that on to what extent do you think the advantage of the disadvantage. You will hear about this term, stand in uh, open-ended, to what extent, everything. You will hear them um, for many times in the future. So stand, so what is a stand? Stand is the opinion, okay? Stand is your opinion in which you have to justify later on the body of your essay. Therefore, it is a very essential part of this. So, ulitin natin. So, we have the part of your introduction. The first part is the general statement. Your general statement could be, it's up to you, could be one, two, three, or even four sentences. But then, your stand will be the last sentence. And here are the ways in which you can write a stand. I agree that. Okay, let us color this. Because I like coloring stuff now. I agree that. So do I suggest I agree that? Mm, di masyado. Why? Because that is the exact same question. Do you agree, disagree? Sagot mo, agree. Ulit, ulit lang, di ba? So I would rather recommend this. I support the notion. See, ang simple. I support the notion that a cashless society provides many benefits to the society. Okay? I adhere the ideology of. So you can also use this. And here, the ideology that children should be allowed to use technical gadgets in their studies. That is my stand, okay? So what about if I want to disagree, okay? How can I say I disagree nang hindi ko ulitin yung word that I disagree? So you can use the word I am not in favor of. Let's say I am not in favor of the idea that the government should be the sole responsible in solving the housing crisis of a country. I'm not in favor. What is my favorite? This is my favorite stand. I find myself in accord with the notion that. So sir, bakit paborito mo yan? Ha boy. But I find myself in accord with the notion that. Siyam na salita agad. Dagdagan mo pa ng many people are in the idea that using gadgets has a lot of disadvantages to children in terms of their education. However, I find myself in accord with the notion that equipments or te technological equipment and devices are essential in young learners' education. Haba, mga probably about 30 to 40 words. Again, am I thinking, am I using my brain here? No. What am I doing? I'm just playing with words. I'm just using the past description so that I can come up with a topic statement. I am using the, the list of the statements that I have for you. Diba? Kung hindi ka naman agree, pwede I disaccord with. Okay. Sir, paano kung gusto kong gamitin itong I find myself in accord with the notion that? Okay, paano kung gusto ko po itong gamitin? Pero in the negative side, I do not find myself in accord with the notion that. Ilang word dyan? Labing isa. Diba? So, mas lagyan pa ng mga on the other hand, in addition to that. 
daming words. Doon pa lang, di ba? You're raking up points already in terms of um, getting as much words as you can, as many words as you can. So that's what I suggest when it comes to giving your stand. Okay? Now, here are the list of the stands that you can uh, probably copy, take a screenshot of. But again, you don't have to anymore because I'll be... Uh, making a handout for this so that meron ka ng copy para pag gumawa ka, pwede ka nang gumamit ng template using each of the words I have here. So before I uh, tell you exactly how to make an introduction with this stand, may mga questions po ba kayo? Okay. I'm not hearing anything. Guys, anyo pa ba kayo? Okay. All right, so wala kayong question, ha? So this is how you make a stand. Now, here is a sample introduction. So first, I'm going to make a general statement, right? So my general statement right here, okay? So I have a general statement right here. Uh, one of the essential needs of people is a shelter which would protect them from harsh environments. That's a general statement because I am providing... I'm giving an importance of what housing is about. And look at the stand. This is the reason for my disagreement on the idea that the government should solely respond to this aforementioned need. So take a look at that. No repetition, no redundancies. I came up with my own version, okay? I came up with my own version um, from the topic. So later, I will show you side by side how to make uh, a great introduction without uh, thinking about many other things. So this is how it is in uh, perspective. Okay, take a look at this. Gadgets such as cars, refrigerators, and televisions have become as haves. This is beneficial to the society. Okay, so gadgets such as cars, refrigerators, and televisions have become must haves. This is beneficial to the society. Now, here is your question. Do you agree or disagree with the statement? Do I agree or disagree with what? With gadgets being beneficial to the society. Now, it says here, give reasons and examples, but it doesn't include whether it is my personal reason or example. So it means na hindi ako maglalagay ng tinatawag nating personal example before the conclusion, okay? So let's give it a go. So what makes this introduction ineffective? Okay, first of all, I would like to ask, um, I would like to ask Angeline. Angeline, are you there? Can you hear us, Angeline? Angeline? Yeah. Let's say Angeline. Okay. Christine Magadia, can you hear us? Christine? Yes, Christine? Yeah. Okay. So, two participants. So, let me see. Wait lang, ha? Okay. What about you, Joe? Joe, do you have a question? No, I'm sure. Okay. Joe, I'm going to ask you with this, okay? Since I call lang atang active enough. So here is my task description. Take a look at this. Now, I want you to look at this introduction side by side. Here's the introduction, and here is the task description. Now, my question for you is. What do you think makes this introduction ineffective? Again, the problem here, Joe, let me tell you, is that the terms gadgets, such as cars, okay, such as cars, televisions, and um, refrigerators have become must-haves. So that is the problem. Because technically, if you're going to look 
side by side with the introduction. Okay. The gadgets such as cars, refrigerators, and um, televisions have become must-haves. It is essentially repeated. Mm -hmm. This has led to the argument that such pieces of technology is beneficial to the society. Now, what makes this gadgets such as cars, refrigerators, and televisions have become must-haves wrong? First of all, sabi natin, wag uulit ng words from the task description into your introduction because technically examiners would notice that and they would definitely identify na, oh, uh, this candidate is only repeating the words from the task description, probably baka hindi siya resourceful sa words. So, bigyan ko siya na mababang score sa vocab. Diba, agad-agad, kakaumbisa pa lang, mababa na ang score sa vocab as early as the introduction. We don't want to commit that error. We don't want to risk that. So, the other problem is that gadgets such as cars, refrigerators, and televisions, we call this enumeration. And when you are giving example, giving example does not have uh, any place in introduction. Hindi ka magbibigay ng example sa introduction. What you need to do in the introduction is to generalize. So how can I generalize cars, refrigerators, and television? And then why don't you just refer to them as gadgets? And the problem is gadgets is the word being used in the topic. So here is a sample of a much better introduction. I want you guys to ponder here. The increasing reliance of modern society on the efficiencies brought about by technology has led to the widespread use of gadgets and their incorporation into everyday life. Some of these tools, which again, I'm not referring which, have become so widely used that possessing them has become a necessity to function effectively. Take a look at this stand. Although there are disadvantages to this, my belief is firm that technological equipment provides a lot of benefits to the world. That makes my stand, I agree with the idea that gadgets such as cars, uh, refrigerators, and televisions are important to the society. And that will give birth to my explanation. What are my reasons for this? What are my justifications? And what examples do I have to prove that this point really is uh, important, okay? So again, any questions so far with introduction? Later, I will show you samples, okay? I will show you another example in the end of the slide um, from this question. How is this uh, similar to my task description? And why is this task description very effective paraphrase of the question? And what stand did I use? What will be the arguments that I will give you? So right now, we shall jump right into the body. Okay, so I'm done with introduction. Now the body, okay. So again, how many paragraphs for the entire typical do you agree, disagree essay? Al J. Nina, do you have any uh, answers for that? Sir, entire essay. Our essay, how many paragraphs? 200, 200, uh, five paragraphs, 250. Five paragraphs, that is correct. Okay. So I used uh, an introduction paragraph already. And then I have a concluding paragraph. So how many paragraphs in the body do you think I should have, Nina? Three paragraphs. That is very accurate. So I will be... Uh, allocating three paragraphs in the body of my essay. Aside from the introductory paragraph, aside from the concluding paragraph, the body contains the bulk of your essay. It contains a lot of words. And this is where uh, you will be accomplishing your target number of words. So how can I present 
the body effectively in a do you agree or disagree essay? Then the first thing you do is you have to defend your side. You have to ask yourself, how can I answer the question why? Why yes? Why do I agree with cashless payment? Why do I think that vegetables are better rather than fast food? Why it is better to study with uh, technological assistance rather than to study without any equipment at all? Okay? So you will explain. So you can give positive arguments on the side you adhere. Okay? Again, you can give positive arguments on the side you adhere. And you can also give negative arguments on the side you disagree. Guys, before I continue, um, I will add just one, uh, no, one slide, okay? I will be adding one slide, blank slide, so that I can write stuff. All right. Uh huh. Okay, I'm going to share my screen with you again. Okay, I'm going to share my screen with you again. Let me just uh, go to the slide where we already are. Okay, shift F5. All right. Okay, let me share my screen to you now. Okay, so does everyone see a blank slide? Are you guys seeing a blank slide right here? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you so much. So now I want to write a text. Mm -hmm. So obviously I did my introduction and I said I agree with cashless uh, society. Okay. So what is my argument one? Safety. So how can I write an essay? How can I write a paragraph about safety? I can talk about safety when it comes to the features. Okay. Features of credit bank cards plus online payment schemes. which are better than using coins or paper bills. Well, obviously you will be using the terms coins or paper bills, money, many times over. So you can replace these words with others. Let's say you can replace them with um, banknotes. You can replace them with... Um, payment or coins, and then you refer to them as them and they. These payment methods or these physical payment methods, or you can also use that. Again, I want you to be resourceful when it comes to words because examiners would identify repetition. So to avoid repetition, basta hindi nag exist yung word sa same sentence, uh, on the next sentence, wag mo siya ulit uulitin. Pwede gumawa ng synonym or pwede iwasan mo yung word and then you can refer to that word again. So, sentence one, na ulit yung word. Sentence two, wag gagamitin yung word. Sentence three, pwede na ulit siyang ulitin. So, para maiwasan lang na masyadong magkalapit. So, you can repeat, but I want you to avoid those words to be very close to each other. So, avoid din natin yung mga hand in hand, side by side, day by day. Yeah. They are very redundant, okay? So, uh, safety. Now, I have argument number two. Okay. Argument two. Which will be convenience. So, I'm going to give an example. Give situation. Let's say the situation I'm going to give will be paying bills. Uh, what else? Uh, paying in a grocery 
or shopping mall. So, can you guys pay bills online? Yes. Is it much better to pay bills online rather than to go, let's say, sell core, pumunta ka ng, ng Prime Water, pumunta ka ng PLDT, ng, ng Globe, pipila ka doon. Pipila ka doon, a hassle, maghahanap ka ng parking, wala mapagparkingan, mainit, labas ka, pila, face shield, face mask, di ka makahinga, uh, huwawa pa ng COVID, o, naman sana. So, mas convenient po ba ang pagbabayad ng bills online? Yes, mas convenient pa ang pagbabayad ng bills over the counter sa mga banks. Yes. So, nakapag-argue ba ako na convenient ang, pag sabi mong convenient, hindi mo kailangan magbigay ng effort. So, pwede ka maglagay dito ng hassle-free, pwede ba? Pwede kang bigay ng mga ideas like uh, low effort, uh, minimum effort, di ba? So, yung natipid mo na oras, pwede mong idagdag din. The time spent in um, falling in line, signing up with different papers, and being exposed to virus, di ba? The time saved the effort saved can be utilized in a much more productive uh, activities. Di ba? Like working. E sa kalahati ng araw mo, ipinila mo lang. You get the idea. So that's my uh, argument number two. Eh sir, unfortunately, sa argument number three, wala na po akong ano eh. Wala na po akong paliwanag. Pa, hindi ko na po maipagtatanggol pa ang cashless payment. So what I'm going to do po. Okay. So argument three, as you can see right here, I'm going to put another text box. In your argument three, if you cannot, gagawin ko naman siya blue. If you cannot think of another advantage refute the side you did not pick. So what do we mean? By refute the side you did not pick, sisiraan mo yung kabila. Sisiraan mo yung physical money. Sisiraan mo yung physical cash. Sisiraan mo yung coins. Na ano, um, they are unsanitary because many people will touch that. Ano pa? Um, they are easy targets for robbery or theft and once they are captured diba once they are collected by robbers or thieves you cannot get them back anymore kahit mahuli mo sila na ipayad na nila sa drugs or na itapon na nila somewhere na itago na nila yon but if you have money or sorry if you have credit or bank cards it is protected so pwede mong idagdag ito, protection, as a feature absent from money which is now present in credit or bank cards. Okay. So that's it. And then this is where you put your conclusion. So conclusion. We're not in green. Summary. Yeah. That's it. That's how you make an essay. All right. That's how you... Um, argue with your body. That's, oh, syempre, from argument safety features, okay, dun ka maglalagay dito sa argument two ngayon. Alright, this is where you're going to put um, in addition to that. Okay. Now, in argument three, this is where you're going to put on the other hand or however. Okay. As if you're going to add more examples here, this is where you can put, for example, for instance, to illustrate a situation, many people who pay their bills or grocery in a shopping mall then provide the argument. Okay? So that is how you plan your essay. This is how you strategize. Okay. Questions? Sir. Yes. Sir, yung dun sa summary, kasi yung sana po, hindi, hindi sa fact, sana may isang utak. Sila po kasi yung gagawin. Okay, sure. Uh, yung sa summary, sir, ano yung 
talagang tinatanong. Yung yung magandang ilagay doon sa summary. I mean, okay. Yung... Well, you see, Christine, I think if I'm going to spoil what the contents of our summary is, hindi na tayo masyado makakapag-focus sa ano, sa body. So let me uh, do the flow. I'm going to explain uh, first the, the body and then I'm going to give you a uh, more strategical analysis of the conclusion. Kasi I devoted conclusion, I, conclu- I, I devoted a couple of slides for the summary. And let me tell you this, the summary, the conclusion is the most important part of essay writing. That's why I have to add, let's say 20 to 25 minutes just discussing that. Okay. So it, to answer your question, Simply, I just cannot answer it right now. So later, okay. I will give you a more concrete discussion about it. Okay? Thank you. All right, Christine. All right. So we shall... Yes, Joe, you have a question? Uh, yes, sir. This is about the introduction. Mm-hmm. Uh, am I getting the idea that we also, ha- we also need to have a, a good introduction, right, sir? Mm-hmm. And based on the introduction that you presented us a while ago, uh, am I getting the idea that uh, we need to write a good introduction without uh, writing or without really saying the word we agree or we disagree? Okay. So we're going to write an introduction. That's what you said. We're not going to write an agree or disagree. And the reason why we're not going to use the agree disagree is because that is the exact same term those are the exact same words that we will be seeing in your task description in your question so mm-hmm. you see kung gagamitin ko yung words na agree disagree again sa aking introduction it meets the purpose of me para pineflex ko sa examiner look at me i'm very resourceful to words i'm not using the words you use i'm using my own I'm creating that impression. That's why I will not be using agree, disagree. But again, as I've mentioned, Joe, take a look at this. Um, you can use the word I agree. Wala naman ako sinabing bawal. Here, huh? oh, sample mm-hmm. stand, I agree that. Or I, I disagree that. Okay. But if, if you're going to take my advice, since many people from this country or worldwide will be taking these exams, and there's a probability na hindi sila enrolled sa review center sa this, wala nagtuturo sa kanila, mataas ang chance na itong I agree, I disagree, ang gagamitin nila. Gusto ba natin mm-hmm. pare-parehas na lang tayo? Ayoko. Kasi ako, iba ako eh. Like, I want to use, I find myself in accord with the dose and that. See, if, I'm, if the examiner would read that, oh, for the 10 times today, I am reading, I agree, I agree. Oh my God, nakakasawa. Oh, the first time, oh, I had here, uh, with the ideology of, wow, it sounds intellectual, diba? It sounds uh, academic in nature. It sounds discursive. So, you know, it, it leaves uh, an impression. So an introduction is, should be, yes, catchy. An introduction should be, should contain important details, but we should also remember not to repeat words from the task description. Because if we do, this is the, the question that I use, okay? This one, I even ask you, why is this ineffective? Dahil inulit lang ngayon mga words from the past description. But again, if, if you want to, you can, but that doesn't give you a fair chance of getting a score higher than five, I guess. So. Okay, sir, thank you. Okay, Jo. All right, so opinion is essential, two of which you need to support. So support stand with sufficient evidence, refute the other side. It is wrong, it depends. There's no it depends. You will be the one to give situation so that you can base your outputs into. Now, sometimes you have to choose between two things from your mind or from your heart. You have to remember that this is IELTS. There will be situations in which you have to go against what you feel in order for you to come up with an effective essay. Take a look at this. Without capital punishment, our lives are less secure and crimes of violence increase. Now, this is what we call the background statement. This is not the statement that you're going to agree or disagree about. So, sir, saan po ako mag agree or disagree in this statement? The capital punishment is essential to control violence in the society. 
This is where you have to either agree or disagree. Now, let me ask you a question. Uh, Joe, do you agree or disagree that capital punishment is needed so that we can control violence in the society? I agree, sir. I, you agree, okay. What about you, Christine Magadia? Do you agree with the statement that we need um, that penalty in this country so that we can control violence? Yes, sir, I agree. Yes, you agree. What about you, Aljay and Nina? Are you in yes, favor sir. of this statement that we need death punishment for uh, crime doers so that we can control the crime rate of the country? Yes, sir. Well, okay. I agree. We yeah. agree. Even myself. All right. What about you, Angeline? Can we uh, feel your presence now, Angeline? Do you agree or disagree with capital punishment being essential to control violence in the society? Okay. Angeline, we still haven't felt your presence, so just chill there. Okay. So, you know what, guys? Even I myself, I am in favor of capital punishment because you know how gruesome the crimes that we see on a daily basis. So it's just, we just can't help but to think, you know, those animals, drugs, rapists, murderers, they're going on a killing spree. So we need to do something about them, right? And, you know, we want them to segregate to the functioning society. So this is the society. We want to put them in jail. And not only we want to put them in jail, we want to kill them. Because, you know, honestly, if they're just in jail, we're, they're using our taxes. So our taxes are being used to, um, for people in jail. Our taxes are being used for uh, their food, their, their allowance, their very existence. So we need the tax of the people to pay for the wardens, the jail wardens. So ang madaling sabi, marami sa atin agree sa capital punishment. But you know what? You know what? That is my answer personally. I agree with capital punishment just because. Okay. But I want to slow down a bit. If this is IELTS, okay? This is IELTS. We do not want to answer I agree with capital punishment, other terms, death sentence, death penalty. Now, you will be asking me why. You'll be dumbfounded. You'll be confused. Like, why? Sir, your personal answer is you agree with capital punishment, but because this is IOT's essay writing, you will not agree with it. You heard it right. As I've mentioned, take a look at this. Sometimes you have to choose between from your mind or from your heart. So let me give you an explanation why. What? I would like to argue with the Canadian Criminal Code. Okay, take a look at this. In 1976, all right? In 1976, the Canadian Criminal Code removed, okay, the capital punishment from their constitution. So since 1976, wala na silang, death penalty. Okay. Now take a look at that. When they removed when they removed capital punishment, they removed that penalty. They removed that sentence. What happened has not led an increase in the murder rate in the said country. So the murder rate did not increase. The murder rate somehow decreased. So, so in, look at the explanation, all right? Statistics Canada reports that the murder rate has generally been declining since the mid-1970s. In 2009, take a look, the national murder rate in Canada was 1.81. That was 2009. 2009, 11 years ago. I know, 10 years ago. Per 100,000 population. But let us compare. Compare it when there was capital punishment prior to its removal in 1976. The crime was more than per 100,000 population. Now, 
Let's not go elsewhere. Let's not go to Canada. You know what? The highest crime rate per uh, population, okay, in the Philippines was when, okay, was when there was capital punishment. So you see, I can name countries, I can name states in the US, like Chicago, who have, okay, capital punishment in their judiciary system. And their capital punishment in their judiciary system uh, does not lead to the fact that their crime rate is declining. To put it simply, statistics are telling us, all right, the statistics are telling us that if there is capital punishment in a country like Canada, Philippines, state of Chicago in the U.S., the crime rate increases. But when there is no capital punishment, the crime rate decreases. Now, knowing that, knowing that, knowing the fact that the question is, do you agree that capital punishment is essential to control violence? Our answer now should become disagree. Because reports tell us that capital punishment is not equivalent in decreasing the crime rate in the society. So, sir, I want to know more about this topic. Where can I read uh, more about this topic? I will share you this. This is my um, source, HuffingtonPost.com. So check HuffingtonPost.com. I will link the. I will link the. Uh, I will give you the link later on the description. Okay, and then we have this beta. You can type the keyword beta. That's a. I don't know, 15 to 22 minute documentary of how is Severino. You can learn more about capital punishment and why capital punishment will not help a society to decrease its crime rate. And it's actually quite the opposite. So now I don't want you to change your personal perspective. I don't want you to change your personal opinion on this. If your answer at the end of the day is still Go capital punishment. I agree with capital punishment. Here is what I want you to do. If this is the question, God forbid, Sana. If this is the question you see in the exam, and it's about capital punishment, you're asked to agree or disagree with it. Your answer should be disagree, because examiners don't like controversial topics, and when you agree with capital punishment, that's when controversy happens. So what is the best way to deal with um, overpopulation? And then ang, ang argument mo is abortion. So again, that's also uh, what they call this. It is also something that examiners would not appreciate because we don't have data to back it up. That's it. So today, when it comes to the idea of whether you, your opinion is still with capital punishment, it's okay. But my request is this. If your exam is today and you see this question, I want you to answer disagree with capital punishment. Okay. Can I count on you for that, Joe? Yes, sir. Okay, what about you, Christine? Can I count on you to answer disagree if this is the yes, question? Sir. Exam. What about you, Alj? Yes, okay. yes, sir. This, this is IELTS. This is what examiners would appreciate. Now, at the end of the day, we can go outside after the exam and we can shout, oh, capital punishment rules. Death penalty rules. Okay, I love death. Sentence, Puede. that is your personal viewpoint. But I don't want you just to answer just because, especially if it's IELTS, okay? Now, Angeline, andyan ka ba, Angeline? Karamdam ka naman sa amin? Ayan. Tulog na ata si Angeline, okay? Now, rules and examples. The argument or reason should be longer. 
then examples given. Again, there are three ways that you can uh, write examples, okay? The first one, for example. The second one, for instance. The third one, for to illustrate. And sabi ni Anjali, nasa work daw siya at nakikinig. Okay lang, Anjali, it's fine, all right? We just want to feel your presence now, all right? But as I was saying, uh, yes, we have different ways to give examples. And as I've mentioned, okay, let me write something on my annotations again. I'm just going to put a text box right here. All right, so intro, again, we're done with intro. Then we have your argument one, argument two, then argument three, and then conclusion. Now, this one, in argument one, I gave, for example, okay, in argument one, I put an example. Is it okay if I submit my essay with only argument one bearing my only example? Do you think? Anyone? Argument one, sir, lang yung may example. Yes po, argument lang, one lang ang merong example. Yes, sir. Yes. What about if both argument one or two and two, sorry, contains the example? Yes. Now, what about if all of those arguments contain example? Okay. Now, here's my rule. The minimum, okay, the minimum is that argument one Argument two and argument three, uh, at least one of them must contain an example. Now, if all of them will have the same, let's say all argument one, argument two, and argument three, all of them will have the same, uh, they will have example. I, I just want you to change, for example, into for instance. And I want you to change the other, for example, into to illustrate so that they do not have any resemblances at all, okay? Um, to illustrate, wag nang, to illustrate as an example, because, you know, to illustrate means to give an example, and as an example means the same thing, so that's redundancy. So that's it. You can either have one example on the entire essay, you can have two samples on the entire essay, you can have all three on all those three arguments, um, but there should be at least one, okay? So you don't have to force yourself to put all the examples in arguments one, two, and three. What examiners want is that at least in all your essay, in all the entirety of it, there should be at least one example. All right, so that's it. I just want to make that clear before I proceed to this. Okay, again, the arguments and reasons should always be longer than the examples. Given, you can give at least two examples. Example, for instance, gadgets like cell phones and laptops. You don't have to tell me everything, every gadget. Like gadgets such as cell phones, laptops, desktops, tablets, uh, personal computer, projector, speakers. Computers, laptops, or laptop cell phones. Okay, na yun. you don't have to mention everything out there. Okay, let's say what else? Um, structures such as malls, churches, municipal halls. Diba? You don't have to tell me everything. You just have to say two. Pwede na. Okay. Now, every argument. So you see it. Okay. Let me put this into perspective. I'm going to write a text again. Okay. So we have argument intro. Let me use the color red ink now. All right. So intro. So body one, body two, body three, and then conclusion. All right, body one, body two, body three, okay? In each body, 
right here in each body, this is what it should contain. Okay, each part of the body, this is what they should contain. They should contain three things. Okay, we give the argument. We give the discussion of the argument. And then you can give an example. Again, example is optional. Okay, you can give the example on the first paragraph of the body, or you can give it on the second, you can give it on the third, or you can give all three. All right, so give the argument. One of the many benefits of technology is explain, discuss it, give me situations. For example, okay, that's how you do it. Now, this is my sample presentation when it comes to the housing, okay, housing. My first argument is ownership and property, okay? So you, you say this, like this. One of the reasons why, I, why the idea of housing being the sole responsibility of the government is ownership and property. So you explain, why did you think so? Well, because if the government will provide for the families, the homes will be technically owned by the government and they can be taken away anytime. Now, if that happens, the sense of security is absent. Okay, I explained it, why ownership and property is my first argument. Now, here's my second argument. All right, sorry, there's an example. All right, let me use my annotation. There's an example. So my first argument is ownership and property. Here is my discussion and here is my example. Squatters and illegal settlers who live in government-owned properties because when they do so, it can be taken away anytime. And if that happens, the sense of security is absent. Now, I have my second argument. And my second argument is empowerment. So I will discuss why empowerment will be a problem if only the government provides for the society as the main um, giver of houses. Well, if people can provide for basic needs such as shelter and not the government, then people will have confidence that they could also solve other problems on their own, such as poverty. So this empowerment of people will lead to a progressive country through empowering the entire nation. That is my explanation. Why my belief is that the government should not be the one to provide houses to the people. Okay, next slide. Argument three is indolence. So my discussion here is that people will be dependent on the government to solve all of their problems if housing is provided for all. They will be too dependent to the government. And people will be demotivated to work anymore because the government is always there to provide all the things that they need. So it means the progress is less and it becomes personal and social struggle throughout the country. Again, I am not writing the essay yet. I am just giving you what arguments I am going to put in each of the paragraphs later. This is what we call the planning phase. This is what we call the drafting phase. Okay, now in conclusion, as I've mentioned to Christine a while ago, conclusion is a very essential part of your essay. This is the closure. It serves as the closure of your um, presentation of the idea. So in conclusion, you can do any of these. You can summarize your main points. You can answer the question, so what? Now, if you guys attended my grammar for lecture last week, then answering the question, so what, means using a conditional statement. To be specific, the first conditional. If plus present simple, comma, future. 
tense, okay? If you haven't attended my Grammar for Lecture, it is still uploaded in my YouTube account or on my YouTube channel. So I want you to check it out, okay, after this lecture so that you can present a much polished, a much more polished presentation of your conclusion. All right. So how do we conclude? We conclude by giving out statements and quotations. We conclude by relating it to reality or factual events that you know. But most importantly, in restatement of the stand, that is the best and most effective conclusion out there. When you say restatement of your stand, you are basically going to repeat the first statement you made in your introduction together with the I agree, I disagree, uh, I, I support. So you may say that in conclusion, there are many reasons why I support the idea that the government should not be the one responsible in providing houses for the masses. Or perhaps um, in conclusion, there are many benefits of eating vegetables as compared to um, consuming fast food options because of their health concerns. Well, you, you can repeat that. We call it the restatement of your stand. And then you can recommend some possible solutions. Let's say the topic does not ask you about your solution. So you are not going to prov provide one. But because we want the examiners to see, we want the examiners to know that as candidates, we want to give impression that I care about the welfare. Let's talk about housing. Since I don't want the government to provide housing, then definitely there is still a housing problem that exists in our society. So what suggestions can I make? So instead of the government being the only responsible, why don't the people and the government work together so that owning a house becomes possible? Okay, so we call this social security. So we have SSS, we have Pag Ibig. So we are not just basically depending on the government alone. We're actually working hard for that to happen through the government's effort. So it should be the two of them. Again, I am giving a suggestion and recommendation. That is the best way to give conclusions. And again, we can choose a different terms, okay? If you want to, to begin your conclusion with this, in conclusion, comma, to conclude, comma, can use in general, comma, you can use um, generally, comma, or you can use this. So there are five ways to begin your conclusion paragraph. You don't just have to stick with in conclusion or to conclude, use another, okay? What else? Um, avoid using the terms, therefore I conclude. Examiners hate them, okay? So they hate them. Questions? None, all right. Let us continue. So when a country develops its technology, the traditional skills and way of life die out. It is pointless to try and keep them alive. Do you agree or disagree? So here's my sample conclusion. The belief is firm that culture should never die out. So it means I disagree that culture should, should be gone. Throughout the years, traditions have become an important factor in distinguishing one race from the other. Technology, although it has helped humanity, could not be a basis of morality, for values could never be altered by science. That is my general statement right there. What else? Space travel. Here's my sample conclusion. Okay. Um, ever since the first space mission, there has been no doubt on what the human mind can reach with the help of technology. The once distant moon is now just heartbeat away. Nevertheless, no matter how important these space missions have proven, there is more to life than exploring the galaxy. And I wholeheartedly believe, again, this is the restatement of your stand. 
that priority to be given to Paramount. Yes, Christine, my question, ka? All right. Should be given. Okay, should be given to the needs paramount to the survival of both the rich and the poor. Uh, if you want to improve your writing, read, read newspapers, read samples. I have tons of samples on the group and I'm going to post most of them. So yung mga hindi nasundan kanina na mga sample conclusion, introduction, and body, I will be posting entire essays later. Uh, read newspapers, read your review materials, check your orange book. Uh, if you find words you don't understand, search for the meaning and use them in your own sentences. Try to find uncommon words, what we call big words, used in your everyday English so that you can understand the task description better. And they are a big help in improving your vocabulary in the exam. So um, coaching, we will be discussing uh, coaching soon. Especially, guys, give me a heads up kung ang inyo pong exam ay two months from now. So pag ganon, sabi mo, sir, ang exam ko po ay... Uh, October, ang exam ko po ay November, message mo ako. Or kung meron mag-September sa inyo, message mo ako so that we can jump right into coaching. So sa mga hindi naman, for those students who are still taking their time, coaching sessions can wait. Okay? So grammars 1 to 4, tapos na natin yan. Check my YouTube account. Alright? Content writing, tapos na rin tayo dyan. Check my YouTube account. Vocab 1 and 2, we're done with vocab. Vocab 2, ilelecture natin yan live. Uh, and then, ito yung example na gusto kong sabihin. All right. This is the isolated example that I was referring to a while ago. Okay. My college English teacher is not a graduate of any of these courses, but she can still teach the language in a very clear manner. Thus, it is not necessary for an English teacher to have graduated from these courses. So what makes this wrong? Because of the word my. My, my college English teacher. Teacher mo lang, hindi ko teacher. Hindi niya teacher, hindi natin teacher lahat. So that makes this uh, very vague. So what do you suggest, sir, uh, that the example that we can use instead? Take a look at this. Not all English teachers in colleges and universities are graduates of these three courses, knowing that teaching is also a learning process. Thus, effective teaching skills are more important than having graduated from these courses. So, not all English teachers versus my college English teacher. Because when you say not all English teachers, you are generalizing. But when you say my college English teacher, it's just your teacher. Okay, so let's do a recap. Okay, before I provide you with samples, let's do a recap. So in introduction, you introduce the theme, you introduce the topic, you provide the two views. Here's the first view, well, many people say this. So you can state something like um, the first general statement, and then your second sentence could probably be, many people believe that, many individuals are of the opinion of, many people um, think that. So, and then you put your stand. As I've mentioned, your stand is, uh, I find myself in accord with the notion that um, I am in favor of, I do not find myself in accord with the no notion that. And then here's the body. First paragraph, supporting arguments plus reasons and examples. Take a look. Supporting arguments plus reasons and examples. Okay. Supporting arguments plus reasons and examples. And then, sir, my next argument would be also another supporting argument. But I have a problem. What if I do not have another supporting argument plus reason and example? This is the time where you can refute. Sisiraan mo yung choice na hindi mo pinik. Okay, so that is how you do the body. And then conclusion, summary of what we discussed. So let's take a look at this in practice. So here is an example. All right, in many countries, take a look, I put a purple color because uh, later we will be comparing them side by side. Why is this purple? Why is this green? Why is this red? Okay, take, in many countries, an increase in life expectancy means that people work until they get older to pay for their retirement. So it means that the idea of this topic has something to do with working people even though they are old. 
And then an alternative is to work at a young age, which means working younger so that they can retire earlier so they can enjoy their life much better. So do you think this is a positive development? Sir, hindi ko naman po nakikita yung do you agree or disagree. Now, do you think this is a positive um, development? Now, where do I put my stand here? Okay, do you think this is a positive development? So since you are being asked to choose whether do you think this is a positive or negative development, sir, ano po yung positive or negative development? That an alternative is to work at a younger age for people so that they don't have to work until they retire. So that is where I'm going to agree or disagree. Do I agree that people should work younger, retire earlier, or do I agree or do I disagree with this that people should not work younger, they should work older, and they should retire old? So that is our topic. So let's see. Look at my introduction. The worldwide increase in the average life expectancy. Take a look at that. An increase in life expectancy. The worldwide increase in the average life expectancy of people has resulted in many individuals working until they reach their elderly years to pay for their retirement. That is basically a call out to this statement. That's why I put the color purple in this statement and in this statement. Now take a look at the green one. An alternative is to work at a younger age. That is the idea. Nevertheless, there are those who put forward the idea of getting employed at an earlier age as an alternative to this. And then, do you think this is positive or ne uh, negative? Then this is my stand, the red one, which I support to be highly beneficial to the working population, companies, and the entire nation. I'm not actually uh, giving examples. I'm actually highlighting which areas do this topic uh, will cover. Okay, so this is my task description and this is my introduction. Questions before I proceed to the body. Right, not hearing any questions. All right, let us proceed to the body. So here is the body. I'm going to read this to you in most cases. So we will be defending the side. Okay, we will be giving reasons why working younger is obviously better than working until people reach the retirement age. So in most cases, having a job, okay, having a job at a younger age is extremely advantageous to the individual. So you open up a statement with saying, this is a simple statement, the general idea. I offer to you my argument that working at a younger age is better because they provide advantages to individuals. Now, what are those advantages? So let me enumerate, okay? Um, this allows them to be employed during their most generative years and obtain valuable work, experience and marketable skills much earlier in life. In effect, these people achieve greater career success and accumulate wealth ahead of others, enabling them to retire before they get too old to enjoy the retirement. So I gave you the argument, and I gave you the discussion of the argument. So that is the sample. Guys, don't worry if you're not able to copy or take screenshots of this, because I'll be posting this on the group later together with the replay of this video. Now, reason number one, we're done. Reason number two, the practice of employing young professionals is also great to companies. So I've mentioned in my introduction about the advantage of working uh, younger to not only individuals, but also companies. So the practice of employing young professionals is also great help to companies compared to older ones. So I'm putting them side by side in terms of comparison. Beginners are arguably more productive, more uh, motivated, enthusiastic, goal-oriented. Okay, and then I am giving samples right here. What are the examples of being more productive being more motivated, enthusiastic, and what do you mean by goal-oriented? Okay, these young workers can provide new ideas, come up with ingenious solutions, and bring fresh perspectives to the establishments they work for, ultimately leading to improved productivity and financial gains in various industries. 
Now, third reason. Although it is customary for people, okay, it is customary for people to keep working until they reach the age of retirement, this has proven to be seriously detrimental to governments. So again, we're talking about the government here. So this is the reason, number three. Having an aged labor force has been associated with a greater employment competition. Uh, this is the comparison. Wala na akong another idea, sisiraan na natin yung pagtatrabaho ng matanda. So having an aged labor force has been associated with greater employment competition. Uh, associated with higher unemployment rates, which can weaken a nation's economy. Now, let us compare what if mas bata naman yung ating mga workers. Okay, On the contrary, the robust increase in economic growth is seen mainly in many developing countries today have been broadly linked by experts to having younger professionals recruited into workforce. And the final part of this is the conclusion, most definitely. In conclusion, this is the restatement of my side. Being employed earlier instead of working until one ages is clearly an attractive option, which is equally important as, or equally the same as, I agree, with working earlier. This development can produce many favorable outcomes, which can substan substantially Benefit individuals, this is what the topic is about. I presented to you an advantage to individuals. I presented to you advantages to corporations, which I refer to now as businesses because I don't want to repeat words. And I refer to the government as communities right here. So which is um, the last part. So individuals, businesses, communities, exactly what I mentioned in the beginning. Okay, guys. That will be the end of our topic today. Okay, so do you guys have any questions or concerns with our topic? With agree, disagree? The beginning, conclusion, what? Any questions? All right, Christine, do you have a question? No, sir. Okay, what about you, Al Nina? Do you have questions? None, sir. None, sir. Thank you. Paul. Okay. Joe, do you have any questions or concerns? None, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. And Angeline, we will not be asking you anymore because you're working. So, guys, that summarizes our agree disagree. I hope you guys had a lot of fun as much as I did. I hope you guys learned a lot of things, especially in creating your very own essay. And um, I'll be posting some files that you will need in uh, your preparation in the future. And I will be also posting some uh, links, replays of this lecture and sample essays. Even the, the essay that I have just posted today in, in the last part of my discussion. So I'm going to put all of them today. So probably around three or four o'clock in the afternoon, they are already posted in our Facebook group on our um, Discord server. And for those of you who still have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, kindly do so, so that you will not miss important announcements, okay? That will be the end. Oh, Joe, you have a question, yes. Uh, sir, for example, po, gumawa kami ng mga essays, sample essays mm -hmm. uh, on our own, uh, dun po sa mga examples or sa mga parang topics na binigay nyo po, or even yung nasa orange book, uh, we can have po the essays and then pwede po namin siyang isend 